Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting in the all new Toyota GR86. So of course a collaboration uh, with Subaru. So Subaru's equivalent offering being the Subaru BRZ. So this is the new for the 2022 model year. And instead of the naturally aspirated 2.0 liter, we now have a naturally aspirated 2.4 liter. And a lot of people may have wanted that to be a turbo. Uh, I'm very happy with the decision they made and the changes they've made to this engine. I think it's fantastic so we're going to get into all of that. So a 2.4 liter boxer four cylinder and the way that this engine is larger is that they've increased the size of the bore. So the pistons are now wider, they have the same stroke so they move up and down the same distance uh, allowing for more air in that engine which of course means more torque. So we are now up to 228 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. Same peak RPM as previously with the horsepower and then for torque 184 pound-feet of torque at 3,700 RPM and this is quite a bit sooner. However, that's not really the full story. So you'll probably often hear with this vehicle that the torque, the peak torque is now way, way sooner. But if you look at the old torque curve, the way it happens is it comes up, it reaches a peak, it then comes down, and then it gradually increases as you go across into those higher RPMs up to 6,600, 6,400, where you have your peak torque. However, it's just slightly higher than that earlier peak. So it's not like you're getting um, um, a ton of torque sooner but the big benefit really isn't that difference in RPM number which again I think will probably be overstated the big thing is that it's all been bumped up so similar curve you still still do have a little bit of a torque dip like you did previously not quite as severe but fortunately all of it's been bumped up so you have significantly more torque which is fantastic and this is once again using Toyota's D4S injection so it has both direct injection for maximum power and then it has port injection for your low and mid-range power uh, getting better efficiency in those zones so I like that they do that because I think there are some disadvantages of going just direct injection and so this one here using both and kind of getting the best of both worlds now, as far as the transmission, it's pretty much carryover. You've got the exact same gear ratios in the manual, exact same gear ratios in the automatic. Strengthens a little bit in order to compensate for the added torque. Um, however, there is one difference in the final drive ratio. So now we're going back to the original final drive ratios of the Scion FRS uh, when that came out. So 4.1 for the manual and 3.9 for the automatic versus the new manuals, the 2020 manuals, those are coming with the 4.3. So you're losing a little bit of torque uh, in each gear because of that taller final drive. However, you have more than enough torque with the engine to make up for that difference. Uh, so about 12.5% more torque overall in every single gear, which is fantastic and definitely noticeable. Now, manual versus automatic. Honestly, the decision is pretty simple, and that's because the manual is just pretty much better in every way. It's lighter, and it's quicker, and it has more aggressive gearing. So zero to 60 of the previous gen manual, about seven seconds, now 6.1. Previous gen automatic, about eight seconds, now 6.6. .6. So the manual is still faster, uh, and that's really because of the more aggressive gearing in all the gears. Even though you have that extra time for shifting, uh, because the gears are more aggressive, you get to put down more wheel torque in each gear, meaning you get better acceleration. So gears one through six in the manual transmission, every single gear is more aggressive than one through six in the automatic transmission. You have a one-to-one -one ratio in fifth gear in the automatic, you have a one-to-one -one ratio in fourth gear in the manual. So out on the track, it was a very clear difference as far as which one I preferred driving. I drove the automatic first and it kind of felt quickness-wise like the last gen manual. And then I got in the manual and I was like, okay, this is where this thing comes alive. So really for the driving experience, the manual's the way to go because it's lighter and it's got better gearing and thus it is quicker. So why not a turbo? Well, when you look at the weight of this car, then you figure out why they didn't go with a turbo. So it's only about 20 to 30 pounds heavier, kind of depending on where you go. I'll put up the weights on the screen so you can see the differences, but it's not that much added weight and it's a significant amount of added torque. And so as a result, you get a car that weighs very similar to previously, except now it has more torque and it has that same lovely characteristic of the naturally aspirated engine, very responsive. You don't have to worry about turbo lag. You don't have all 
all the weight uh, that would be added if you were to add a turbocharged system and all the intercoolers, piping, coolant, uh, beefing up the hardware in order to make that happen. So I love the decision they made there. They kept the weight down. They did a few things to help keep that weight down. Uh, the roof now being aluminum. The hood was previously aluminum, still aluminum, and then the front fenders are also aluminum. They also took weight out of the seats, uh, and so, you know, a little bit of weight out of the rear muffler. So they've taken weight out in a few places to compensate for this larger engine that has now gone in it. As far as the suspension, similar style to the previous generation. So we've got a McPherson strut up front, and we have a multi-link suspension in the rear. Now, if you look at what Subaru and Toyota say about the rear suspension, and they have the same similar suspension geometry. Uh, Subaru calls it a double wishbone. Toyota calls it a multi-link rear suspension. Uh, and I was kind of confused and asked Toyota about this, and they basically said it's just kind of how they define it. Um, it's the difference. Uh, they're pretty much the same. Of course, they've got different tuning for each suspension, and Toyota's using different springs, uh, but same overall suspension geometry, and that's just what they call it. They call it multi-link. And when I was looking at it, to me, it looks like a multi-link, because you have that upper A-arm, like a double wishbone, and then the bottom arm, uh, you have multiple linkages coming in. So I would reference it as being a multi-link. Uh, Subaru calls it a double wishbone. So how about this interior? Well, we are sitting in the base version, uh, so it's a very simple interior. That said, it does come with a nice screen. Um, you've got nice automatic climate control, uh, you know, touch points, things like that. They've actually added uh, for the premium, you've got padded where your knee's going to be. Here, it's kind of a hard surface for my knee. Uh, overall, you know, you're not going to be impressed with the base level's interior from like a quality of material standpoint. But keep in mind, they've said with destination, this thing is going to come in under $30,000. So it's got a really good price for the performance. Uh, so I, I'm okay with that. I mean, bare bones in here, if you want the nicer interior, you go with the premium. Here we just have these cloth seats. They've actually got a little G in them. Uh, that's what Toyota says, this little pattern here, which is also on the front grill. Little G in that. And then you can get Alcantara with leather inserts if you go with the premium. visibility uh, just like the last generation visibility is fantastic out the front large windows to your side yeah you've got a little bit of a, a blind spot that's kind of uh, cumbersome right there but overall out the back looks good you've got plenty of visibility rear view camera so visibility is great in here uh, and it's actually spacious you know I'm about 6'1 I've got space in here when I drive on the track my helmet pretty much is right at the ceiling um, and, and kind of touching it as you know you go around corners and things like that um, but I do fit in it versus like an MX-5 I can't wear a helmet inside of uh, and my head would just be way above the pillars so it can be done on a track I'd say if you're six foot or lower you're not going to be very comfortable if you're on the higher end of that uh, but can be done and it's a great vehicle out on the track you've got a large screen here apple carplay android auto uh, that sort of thing so nice to have that modern touch as far as comfort the ride's not bad i mean you know it's it's not super firm it's not super soft so i actually like the way that the ride feels and also these chairs even though this is the base version these are very comfortable seats so uh, i don't weigh that much i don't sink in usually that much into seats and i you know i sink into these a good bit and it's actually really comfortable so i like the seats i like the seats in both the premium and the base version so the important question, how is it to drive? And I think a simple overall summary is that it's a lot like the old 86, uh, except now it has more torque. So it's pretty much better uh, in, in pretty much every way because of that. You got a little more, more power without compromising on weight. So the ride is very similar and I think that's fantastic. You're coming with the same front and rear brakes uh, as far as size, you're coming with the same front and rear tires. So very similar, you're on 17s with the base version, 18 inch wheels with the premium version, same tire options, Primacy HP with the base, Michelin Pilot uh, Sport 4s with the uh, premium version. And you know, on the track, honestly, those Primacy tires, because this car doesn't have all that much power, yes, it has more power now, but because it doesn't have all that much power, the Primacies are actually really fun because you just slide around out there. Uh, and if you really want to get those lap times, then the Pilot Sport 4s have tons of grip um, and plenty of grip for this car because it's so lightweight. And so it does whatever you want it to out there. So both of them, good options 
options, whether you want to have a more playful experience, go with the premises, or if you want the more track focused lap time experience, go with the Pilot Sport 4s. Clutch feels good, shifting feels good. You know, it's got that kind of Subaru notchiness to it. Uh, I like the transmission, I like the clutch, I like how easy it is to drive. You don't have downshift rev matching, which I think would be a cool feature for Toyota to add. Unfortunately, they do not. Um, but you do have rev matching with the automatic. Not that it makes, you know, all that huge of a difference. It's, it's more noticeable in manuals. Uh, it would be nice to see it in it, but that does not have. Um, as far as the steering, they have made some changes to make the steering lighter physically, so it's a bit simpler. Uh, they now have an in-column mounted steering assist, and it's all just one simple assembly. Um, as far as the steering, you know, it's kind of light, uh, I would say, overall, but, you know, there's a directness there, there's responsiveness. Of course, if you're on the Pilot Sport 4s, uh, they have a bit better response than these premises, um, but I think you're not going to be disappointed uh, with the steering. It's just kind of light, in my opinion, but it's a light car. Uh, that's fine for me. The throttle is very nice, especially with that added torque, and it's just nice having a naturally aspirated engine. I think when you're making a pure driver's car, if the point of it is to be fun to drive, naturally aspirated is the way to go because you get the most response out of it. And I think response gives you that connected feel, and as a result of that connected feel, you actually feel enjoyment because the car's doing exactly what you want it to do. And it, it has, you know, more torque now. So you put your foot down in third. Third gear is honestly fantastic. When I was driving out on the track, I I spent most of my time, you know, it's a fairly uh, low speed track we're on, and I spent a lot of my time in third gear, and it's a fun gear. It's got good torque to it, so it's actually enjoyable. I mean, these things aren't rockets, right? They're about kind of just having fun uh, in, a, in a low cost, uh, lightweight vehicle, and it nails it. It really does. Now, as far as the weight balance overall, it's a 53-47 split, so 53% of the weight up front. Um, so a very neutrally balanced car. They've also taken out a little bit of roll bar in the rear, so they went from a 15 millimeter down to a 14 millimeter sway bar in the rear, giving you a little bit of added rear grip there. And overall, you know, out on the track, you kind of get this like full car slide to it when you start sliding, and then if you give it enough throttle, you know, you get the rear end to kick out. Uh, it's very playful. So it has. Uh, maintain that very playful nature of the 86 of the BRC which I love I mean it's just fantastic now they have increased the ride height uh, by about 0.2 inches so from 4.9 to 5.1 inches however center of gravity is actually down very slightly I think they said something like 1.2 millimeters so basically same center of gravity um, slightly more ground clearance and the difference being now, uh, you know, you've got that aluminum roof and so you've taken out some of the weight that's up high and so you're able to keep that center of gravity lower. Overall though, I mean, this is the kind of car that I enjoy. Lightweight, rear wheel drive, two doors, you know, it's not overpowered, there's nothing crazy about it, very affordable, um, you know, as far as cars go these days, especially performance cars, most of them just keep getting higher and higher in price, and yet this is going to come in under 30000 with destination, and what a fantastic driver's car at that, you know, you can drive it on the street or on the track, and really enjoy yourself in this thing, and I love that, and I like that you can also be tall uh, and get in it, so, you know, rare that I say this, but this is something I would genuinely buy. Like, it's it's fantastic across the board. There's some simplicity to it. You know, if you're looking for the nicest interior in the world, you're not going to find it in here. Um, if you're looking for the quietest interior in the world, you're not going to find it here. Uh, but if you're looking for joy in driving, this thing delivers. So, thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.